And this one being presented in high definition in Dolby Digital 5.1 audio where available. And the Cubs now taking the field again an off day yesterday first off day in three weeks. And the Red Sox just played a series in St. Louis. Coming off a win Wednesday night. They dropped two of three to the Cardinals in the rematch of last year's World Series. Let's check out the Red Sox lineup that will face Greg Maddox today. Johnny Damon third in the American League in batting average. Edgar Renteria is certainly very familiar with Wrigley Field. David Ortiz the first baseman. Manny Ramirez out in left. It's Trot Nixon in right. Then the switch hitters. Veritek, Miller, and Bellhorn. Bronson Arroyo four for 54 in his career. And here's how the Cubs take the field defensively brought to you by Pepsi the official soft drink of Major League Baseball and the Cubs Todd Walker at second base a former Red Sox Let's go around the infield Ramirez at third Perez at short Lee at first three left handed hitters in the outfield today Hollinsworth Patterson Burnett's Michael Barrett behind the plate for Greg Maddox Dusty trying to get as many lefties in the lineup as possible against Bronson Arroyo Arroyo's held righties to a 170 average this year while lefties have hit him at a 295 clip. And again, Maddox looking for his third consecutive win, and he has walked just two batters in his last five starts, covering 31 and two thirds innings. And the Cubs got another shutout performance on Wednesday from Sergio Mitre, Michael Wirtz, and Ryan Dempster. Fifth shutout for the Cubs this year in the third in the last seven games. The umpires today, the crew chief is Ed Montague, Jerry Lane, Paul Emmel, and Tom Hallion rounded out. And everybody ready for this one. Damon will dig in, 0 for 6 in his career against Greg Maddox, who went 4-0 and against the Sox as a member of the Braves. And we're underway. First pitch strike from Maddox to Damon. Here comes Maddox again on an 0 1. That went inside. Now throwing strikes and even more importantly, throwing quality strikes of the utmost important when you're facing the Red Sox, a very patient hitting team. They lead the American League in base on balls. Yeah, first and on base percentage third and slugging shot foul past third base. The Cubs have out slugged the Red Sox here in the early going with well, the Red Sox with an on base percentage of 358 and they've scored over 300 runs. Well they just shattered Johnny Damon's bat and he's going to go out and pick up the remains of that foul ball. Here, glue this back together, will you? <laughs> Use it next at bat. Of course, when you were kids, you used to just put a, a nail in there, tape it up with some electrical tape, and keep using it, but I think that one's done. That's going to end up in somebody's souvenir vault. Barrett sets up inside and pitches way inside to make it two and two. Red Sox are three and three against the National League. The Cubs are two and four against the American League. Two two pitch. Got it. Called strike three. Damon not sure about it. But Ed Montague rings him up. After getting ahead in the count, Maddox continued to pound Damon inside. That's a little comeback sinker. Not quite as big as some of the sinkers we've seen Maddox throw on that side of the plate, but. According to Ed Montague, caught the inside corner of the plate. Damon didn't think so. Now Edgar Renteria signed a big four-year contract in the offseason. He made the final out in the World Series for the Cardinals against the Red Sox. He turns 30 in August. This is his 10th Major League season, not even 30 yet. Outside corner for a strike. I would venture to guess that Renteria was a very important player in their advance meeting as they went over this Cubs team. Renteria, a guy that 
Saw a lot of the Cubs playing in St. Louis. Probably has the best read on the pitchers on this staff. And besides the advanced scouting report and the videotape work that was done leading up to this series, I'm sure Edgar Renteria was a major contributor in those advanced meetings. Nine career home runs against the Cubs and six here at Wrigley. 2 1 is drilled toward right, but Burnitz will make the catch for the second out. And there's Terry Francona, a former Cub, and led the Red Sox to the World Championship last year, won their final eight games in the postseason. Down 3 0 to the Yankees. They stormed back and did not trail at any time during the World Series against the Cardinals. And a big reason for the Red Sox title is this guy, David Ortiz. The American League Championship Series MVP, three walk off hits in the postseason. One strike offering. Look at nothing in two on David Ortiz. See how Maddox goes about finishing off Ortiz here. Generally in an 0-2 count, he throws a cut fastball up and in and then comes back with the sinker in the same location. See if he does that to Ortiz. Cutter up and in. Push him off the plate a little bit. Now he usually throws a sinker in that same slot. Tries to get the same reaction from the hitter. Bending back out of the way and then the ball tails back over the inside corner. One two same spot to even it up David Ortiz is a guy nobody wants to face with a game on the line. Well, we've talked about it from time to time this year some guys just seem to rise to the occasion when the lights are shining the brightest Ortiz has been one of those guys in his career. High pop fly short center Patterson with the catch one two three go the Red Sox Cubs coming up. Walgreens celebrity bat kids Connor Murphy 10 years old from Elmwood Park Illinois 12 year old Elizabeth Maluda from Naperville young cup fans can get celebrity bat kid contest details in this month's issue of Vine Line. great to have them here today and great to have you along with us as Jeremy Burnett's leads off the bottom of the second strike one from Bronson Arroyo. Yeah, whoever beats the Yankees, <laughs> Red Sox fans are very much a fan of. Let's see, the Red Sox are five and four this year against the Yankees. One to Burnett's deep to right field. That ball carrying out of here. His ninth home. One to nothing. Ninth home run of the season, the seventh here at Wrigley Field. Bernie knows how to endear himself to the hometown fans. Well, it's funny, Len, I was following him up the tunnel as you see our southwest.com. How far did it fly? 360 feet. Following Bernie up the tunnel into the clubhouse after batting practice, he was talking to himself. Recognize and correct. Recognize and correct is what he kept telling himself. Recognize the mistakes he's making mechanically at the plate and correct them. I like that mantra. Recognize and correct. Well, obviously, he corrected it that first at bat. <laughs> no doubt. Got in for defense late on Wednesday, but did not start for just the second time this year. So basically, had two full days off. Comes back, it's a home run in his first at bat. Two and one on Aramis. I think over 400 his last 13 games. A couple of former Pirates battling here Arroyo and Ramirez. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, back in his Pirates days, Bronson Arroyo was a guy that players would line up at the bat rack to get their chances to hack against this guy. He still hadn't quite figured out what his strengths and weaknesses were. He used to try to pitch off of his fastball, which is average at best. 2-2 two, two, and rifled in the left. Almost past Manny Ramirez. And Aramis aboard. So a home run and a single greeting Arroyo here in the second. Now keep an eye on Manny at all times. He's been known to brain cramp on the bases defensively, running the base, anything. You name it, he'll cramp it up. Of course, they didn't sign him for the glove. Hot muggy day like this, you sweat a lot, you get cramps. Most guys get them in their calves. Manny gets them between the ears from time to time. Well, Sergio Mitre cramped up a bit in his right calf, but able to get through it on Wednesday in a career performance. One strike on Todd Walker, who spent 2003 with the Red Sox. Had a great postseason at 349 with five home runs in a couple of postseason series. See the temperature? In the upper 80s today. And Mitre was outstanding. Allowed one ball hit into the outfield in his seven innings. Pop foul by Walker Veritek over near the barrier, and then just behind the dugout. Well, in some respects, the Red Sox players should feel a little bit at home here at Wrigley. A lot of similarities between Fenway Park and Wrigley Field. A lot of nooks and crannies and odd angles. Very little foul territory at either ballpark. And of course, a couple of the Red Sox have played here before, so they should be very comfortable at Wrigley. Ramirez, the runner at first, Burnitz with a leadoff homer here in the second. And two strikes a count on Walker. Here's a pitch. Pulled it foul about the same spot. He popped one up on the last pitch. Now Tribune president Dennis Fitzsimons taking in this big ball game today. Red Sox and the Cubs. Great shot from off the scoreboard out in center. Walker strikes out. That's a second strikeout for Arroyo on the first out here in the second inning. Watch live Cubs games right on your computer. Sign up for MLB.tv now exclusively at Cubs.com. MLB.tv means live baseball. Brunitz with a leadoff homer is ninth of the year, 74th for the Cubs. Todd Hollinsworth getting the start in left, high and deep to right. That ball way back. Out of here for Holly. Off to a great start here in June, hitting over 400, and it's three to nothing. Boy, he massacred that pitch. I don't need to tell you what a good sign is for Todd Hollinsworth. A home run here to right field. His first home run in 116 at bats. Our Southwest.com. How far did it fly? 395 feet. Jumped on that first pitch he saw in the strike zone from Bronson Arroyo and did not miss it. Well, you talked about getting the lefties in the lineup against a guy who's been extremely tough on right-handers, and two lefties have hit home runs. It takes that breaking ball away somewhat. As I mentioned, that's his bread and butter pitch. He's going to work that breaking ball in the strike zone, out of the strike zone, to try to set up an occasional fastball. And when you throw that breaking ball to a lefty, it's coming right into the power of his swing. A one one to Barrett. And now two and one. Well, the Cubs had a very healthy lead in the home run department in the National League, but the Reds just passed them. 
with 74 home runs. Well, the Cubs now with 75, so they're back in first in the National League. Two two to Barrett. Two bouncer past Miller, past Renteria, seeing eye single. Has not enjoyed interleague play very much. Bronson Arroyo, 0 and 5 with an ERA of over four in six starts, six games rather. the city seven nights a week this fall WGN sports coverage of Cubs baseball from Wrigley Field is brought to you by Bud Light fresh smooth real it's all here Bud Light 1918 let's see Cubs Red Sox 87 years of waiting for some revenge well again the Cardinals got some revenge on the Red Sox and winning two of three Cubs trying to win their second straight after losing the first two games on this homestand and it's Corey Patterson batting second today and a long at bat against the Royal in the first inning ended up striking out but saw a lot of pitches could work to his benefit in this at bat I doubt if Arroyo has anything that Corey hasn't seen already two strikes on Patterson he'll be followed by Lee and then Burnitz. Pop foul behind first. Foul territory or tease. And it's caught by Bellhorn. And that'll bring up Derek Lee, leading the National League in two of the three Triple Crown categories. Carl Yastrzemski, the last major leaguer to win the Triple Crown back in 67. What a year he had. So we sit here on June 10th. This is game 59 for the Cubs. And Derek is uh, right in the middle of it. Bob, I know you've heard from a lot of people. I have too about the uh, the voting for the All-Star team. Albert Pujols has been the leader at first base. And there are a lot of Cubs fans who just are scratching their heads. They don't get it because of the year Derek has had. I don't know if they'll ever completely change the way the voting happens, but people have to understand how it works. And when you look at it nationwide, they're going to vote for the guys who've been elite players for the last several years. That's how it happens. Derek has not been a guy who's gotten off to very good starts. What this start will do this year, it's going to help him in the balloting next year. He's going to make the All Star team, but again, likely as a backup. So go out and vote as much as you can as he dunks one into right center. But the key is to make the team. He'd love to be voted in as a starter, but you know, uh, he's not going to mind being a backup to Albert Pujols at all. Not a bit. And you know, a lot of times it's just who do the fans recognize? What names do they recognize? They look at an all-star ballot. Geez, there's Ken Griffey Jr. I've heard of him. I'll vote for him. Well, certainly there's a lot of outfielders in the National League that are having far superior years to Ken Griffey Jr., but he's going to get his share of votes every year because he's junior. Albert Pujols has been featured on many national publications and highlight videos, and certainly in the postseason last year, it never hurts to play in the postseason as far as all-star vote recognition. So Lee, all he can do is go out and take care of business and hope that at some point uh, the fans here at home at Wrigley Field start to punch that ballot. Burnett's homered in the second. The other interesting thing is, you know, he won the Gold Glove two years ago, and he's been the same defensive player every year. But he'll have a better chance to win his second gold glove because of his offensive start. 
again something else that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. He should win it every year regardless of his offense. Pulled foul past Ortiz. A fastball middle of the plate nothing on it no movement. It's a good recipe for a line drive home run to right field recognize and correct Jeremy. You want an honest assessment of the way things are you just ask him we will give it to you straight. How are you feeling right now? Terrible. <laughs> yeah, but you're hitting 300 the last week with four home runs. Just keep plugging away. How are you feeling? Great. One for 19. I mean, it, results don't always dictate how you feel as a hitter. Well, Michael Barrett said that last night after the ball game. Left center for Bernitz. He's two for two. Michael Barrett said he actually felt better earlier in the season. He thought he was hitting the ball harder, but wasn't getting the base hits. Then he feels right now when he's getting the base hits, but not hitting the ball with as much authority. Where he gets jammed a little bit, just muscles that ball out into shallow left center field. Cubs with six hits, four in the second, two more here in the third against Arroyo. Two men on for Ramirez. Here's a pitch. Waist high fastball. Four games over 500. The Red Sox are five over. Both teams in second place in their respective divisions. Fouled off by Aramis. Hey, I wanted to mention uh, congrats to. Uh, to your son Michael who was drafted by the Chicago Cubs in the 43rd round of this week's draft Michael is scheduled to attend UNLV as a catcher. But, uh, congratulations dad. Well thanks it was very exciting you know. Uh, we didn't really expect it and uh, when it happened it caught us all by surprise it was, it was a lot of fun a lot of fun. Thank the Cubs very much for the honor. On the hands fouled away. That's right. You were listening to the draft, right? Or you heard an update. You heard uh, son of former major league. Oh, that's me. That's me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Either they drafted my daughter or my son. <laughs> one of them. Yeah, we're very proud of Michael, and uh, he's looking forward to enrolling at UNLV in the fall and competing for a starting job there. Congratulations to all the draft picks all around the country. What a what an exciting time for a high school senior or a junior college player or a four year school player to get drafted and hopefully start their professional career. Long look by Arroyo to second. Here's the pitch that stays upstairs. Todd Walker's next. It's behind Aramis, and the runners will move up, and a terrible throw by Veritek. Cubs will get a run. Throw to third. And Burnett's is safe. Derek Lee scores on a wild throw by Veritek. Boy, heads up base running. That ball didn't get very far away from Veritek, but both runners advanced. Ended up going two bases when it was all said and done. A breaking ball behind Aramis Ramirez that hits off the mid of Jason Veritek. A 
ill-advised throw right there. Derek Lee was already starting his slide. That's not the kind of mistake you usually see Veritek make. Just lost sight of that ball a little bit as it went behind Ramirez, and then he recognizes right away that was a bad throw. Wild pitch, and then an error. The error on the throw from Veritek. Infield in now. It's 4 1, 2 2 to Ramirez. We'll do it again. That's one of those baseball cliches trying to do too much. I mean, Jason Veritek was going to have to throw an absolutely perfect laser beam right on the bag to even make it a close play. Derek Lee was already into his slide. Tried to do too much right there. If you have to make a perfect play to make it close, don't make the throw. Another 2-2 two -two base hit left field. Burnett's will trot home. And it's 5-1. to one. And Ramirez is 2 for 2. Well, the wild pitch alone advancing Derek Lee to third base was going to force the Red Sox to bring their infield in. They stay in with Burnett's at third base, giving Ramirez just enough of a gap to squirt that ball through the left side. If Renteria is playing at a normal depth, that's a ground ball to short for an easy out. Dave Wallace, a Red Sox pitching coach, is out to chat with Arroyo and Veritek. Three runs in a second on two home runs. Three straight singles while pitching an error, helping the Cubs here in the third. Recognize and correct. <laughs> it's not unusual for ball players to talk to themselves. You see it all the time in the clubhouse, around the batting cage, reminding themselves of various trigger points or things they want to remember as they take an at bat or go down to the bullpen to throw a side session but I think Bernie talks to himself a lot more than anybody else. Keep on talking. He's two for two. Side corner for a strike. Hey, a happy belated birthday to Irene Lively of Alamo Gordo, New Mexico. She turned 105 on June 4th and never misses a day game here on WGN. Pop foul back our way. So she may remember the, the 1918 World Series. Quite possible. Another happy belated birthday to my sister Peg Seckler watching today back in Sagamore Hills right outside of Cleveland. Walker pops it up. Foul ground. And it'll drop untouched. There will be a lot of comparisons made likely in all the, the newspaper columns tomorrow here locally about the, the atmosphere here today versus when the Yankees came in a couple of years ago. I just sense a little more and I wasn't here in 03. My guess is there's some camaraderie between the, the Red Sox fans and the Cubs fans with all the things we've talked about and the connections. And Walker found that one off himself. Ouch. Gonna walk it off. Doesn't feel good, but gonna get right back on the horse. That'll feel a lot better in October. <laughs> mm. Oh, up high on the shin again. That's kind of foul ball that put Todd Hollingsworth on the disabled list for the better part of last season. Up in that shin area. You're used to fouling him off your feet and your ankles, but boy, when you get one that high up on the leg, that's an unexpected shock to the system. Well, Walk may have to borrow that pad for his next at bat. Holly is going to say, "Get your own. <laughs> I have to wear it every at bat the rest of my career." I mean, I, again, I don't know. I wasn't here, but you know, you saw the sign, "Welcome Red Sox Nation." Now, was that the case when the Yankees were here? Forget about it. <laughs> 
I think the Yankees are the team everybody loves to hate. You know, they yeah. represent a certain part of society. You know, you, you spend money to make your problems go away, and a lot of people resent that. Certainly the Red Sox hate the Yankees. But shared suffering, I think, uh, is what makes them a little more friendly with Red Sox fans than, than with Yankee fans. Into center for Walker. Painful at bat, but it ends up with a base hit at the end. Four straight singles for the Cubs here in the third inning. Walker gets out on that front foot a little bit, but keeps his hands back. Breaking ball out over the plate, just lines it back through the middle of the field. Now, especially with two strikes, it's not unusual to see a, a batter get all of his weight out on that front foot, but as long as he keeps his hands back into a good hitting position, he can still do something with the pitch. Hollinsworth went deep, two run homer in the second. And he's now eight for 18 here in June. Todd hit 111 in May. And didn't start a whole lot. Jason Dubois took over and had left early in that month. John Halama, a lefty, out of the Red Sox bullpen, which has struggled as a group. Four of their six guys have an ERA of over five. Ramirez at second, Walker at first. Fouled off by Hollinsworth. Even Keith Folk, their closer, he saved 13 ball games, but has an ERA of just under six. It's been kind of hit or miss with this Red Sox bullpen this year. Two strikes on Hollinsworth. Everybody all right down there? All right, good to go. All right. <laughs> A little warm. Now one and two. Barrett on deck. Until 10 for his last 19. Just one out here in the third inning at Bronson Arroyo's next pitch will be number 70. A big reason why Halama is getting loose. Arroyo has labored the last two innings. Two to Hollinsworth, popped up, and Ramirez will make the catch. That breaks a string of four consecutive hits here in this inning. And with two outs, it'll be Barrett. A couple starts ago, Arroyo had a very similar start against Baltimore. Went two and two thirds, gave up ten hits and seven runs in that ball game. And because he was lifted so early in the game, he was able to come back and pitch in relief two days later against the Orioles again before taking the ball for his last start against the Los Angeles Angels at Anaheim, Orange County, California, United States of America, <laughs> North America. All one on Barrett. Who, by the way, are really good. Angels in first place in the West. If Barrett reaches, Greg Maddox would get an opportunity. That's a strike. Well, 
Bronson Arroyo I'm saying Bronson interesting first name as you check out David Wells great pitching performance Wednesday night at St. Louis after a long rain delay Arroyo named after actor Charles Bronson Is either that or Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> they pick Bronson <laughs> thanks for that. Three and two runners will get a head start. Here's a pitch. High drive. Johnny Damon on the move. Still going. Off his glove. Cubs are going to get two more. Michael Barrett with a two run double. And the lead is now seven to one. And Damon went back on it like he was going to catch it. He got a glove on it, but couldn't squeeze. The ball was hit high in the air off the bat of Michael Barrett, got up above the stadium and really benefited from that pushing wind. They're pushing that ball further and further away from Damon. He was on a dead sprint by the time he got there and just couldn't quite make the play. He was also shading Barrett a couple of steps over into left center field, so that made his run even longer to try to catch that fly ball. Well, a couple of crooked numbers, a three run second, four more here in the third inning. Greg Maddox benefiting from some more run support in his last start the Cubs scored 11 runs in a win at San Diego. Well, if there's a guy who I mean just loves a lead like this I mean you want Greg Maddox on the hill. You know you're going to get six maybe solid seven solid innings out of him. He'll try to be efficient he'll throw strikes. I mean, he's almost automatic. You give him five runs or more. Let's see. 148 wins, five losses since the 91 All Star break when receiving five or more runs in support. Bounced to Ortiz, and he will step on first. A four run third inning. Five hits for the Cubs, a big one. They Michael Barrett. Two run double, and it's now 7 1 Cubs. Wicked hardcore. Yeah, one of the first things I heard today when I got to the ballpark was Clock and Addison. David Ortiz posing a little bit. He talks the talk, but he also walks the walk. That's his 15th home run in 7 to 2. He knew it right when he hit it. That's a no doubter. Ball up and out over the plate. And pose he does. I didn't see Maddox posing when he popped him up to right field last time, but David wants to make sure the cameraman have plenty of time to get him in that statuesque pose, his follow through. Swing and a miss by Ramirez. Looking for a fastball and didn't get it. Tease with a long home run. Cubs still lead by five. Eleventh home run allowed by Maddox. But a solo shot. Well, he's just worked the edges all day. Of course, a guy behind the plate, the crew chief Ed Montague, who's I'm sure has been behind the plate for a lot of Greg Maddox starts. 
Deep to left field, Hollinsworth back, warning track. He has it. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is America's home for sports all year round. Superstation WGN. Well, the wind did not hurt. In fact, helped that fly ball a little bit by Manny Ramirez, but it did stay in. Bob Renly Len Casper with you today. Trot Nixon, the batter. Line to right. Burnett's is there. Solo homer by David Ortiz, but the Cubs' lead is still healthy. Michael Barrett leading off the sixth for the Cubs against left hander John Halama. Bronson Arroyo winches four innings, allowed seven runs on ten hits. were earned charge to Arroyo's record there was an error in that third inning by Jason Baratek Michael didn't mean to Holama throw him out so a 1-3 put out to start the sixth hey Cubs fans on our WG and baseball blog Brought to you by Dunkin Donuts. We have a little fun today with some of the minutia surrounding the Red Sox Cubs history. I guess minutia could be a future word of the day. <laughs> Greg Maddox will bat. It's been pretty efficient today. 72 pitches for Maddox through six. Live ball to left. Manny Ramirez going back. Since 1999. I want him to come back out. Here he comes. First home run for Maddox in four hundred and nine at bats. Not much different than his usual swing, but he got the head of the bat on that one and just did get it into the basket with a little help of a wind blowing straight out of here. If he'd have known it was going to go out, he could have stood at home plate and posed the way David Ortiz did. A home run for Maddox. Well, maybe he will get to 300 career hits. That's number 240. <laughs> That's a big momentum robber as well. The Red Sox got a run of their own in the top half of the inning on that Ortiz home run. We've talked about their high powered offense, their ability to score runs in bunches, and Maddox comes back and nullifies the Ortiz home run by one of his own. Dalton is short right center. Nixon on the move. Two down. That's just a fastball outer half of the plate. Maddox gets a lot of backspin when he makes good contact with the ball. He has a lot of backspin. I think it's that golf background. He knows how to hit down and through the ball at our Southwest.com. How far did it fly? 365 feet. Smiles all up and down that Cubs dugout.
Well, that's a different experience for a pitcher to take a curtain call for a home run. Strike one on D. Lee. Three home runs for the Cubs today, and it's eight to two. The Maddox hit two home runs in '99. Prior to '99, he hadn't homered since 1992. So he has scattered his five home runs throughout his career. Big leg kick by Halama. Now the Cubs had reached their nadir, their low point. On the 26th, rather the 27th, they had lost back to back games to the Astros and Rockies. Saw Mark Pryor go down with an elbow injury. But they won that game. They're 10 and 3 since. And they lead the Red Sox 8 2 today. They were three games under 500, and they're trying to get back to five over with a win today. Two and two. It was Jason Stark, who a uh, baseball columnist who wrote, I think, last year, baseball makes no sense. And there are just things that happen in this game that defy an explanation. We talked about the Cubs scoring four runs in the bottom of that inning. Offense had just completely scuffled. They lose one of their aces on the mound. But everybody else has really stepped up in Mark Pryor's absence. Three and two. And Greg Maddox is starting to get in a groove. Off to an inconsistent start this year. It pitched pretty well at giving his team a chance to win. But through May 25th, had just two wins here in 05. He's trying to make it three straight. Driven the other way. Nixon back on this one. In and out of the Ivy. Nafee around third. RBI double for Derek Lee. Give him 53 on the year. So he's two behind Carlos Lee in the RBI department. He's two for four on the afternoon. And punishes a pitcher for going to a full count with two outs. Nafi Perez on the move at first base. I think that's the only way he scores on this double. If he's waiting to see where the ball is hit before taking off from first base, Chris Byer would probably have had to hold him up at third base, but because he was on the move on the full count with two outs, he scored easily. Strike one on Burnett. Ed Montague has given the pitchers at corners today. As Greg Maddox has had his pinpoint control. And I think most hitters would tell you as long as a guy is consistent, that's okay. I mean, let me ask you this. As a catcher and a hitter, did you find that most umpires were extremely consistent? I'm sure there were a few days where you'd be at the plate and you'd see a pitch that you didn't see behind the plate that was called for a strike, but I know every umpire tries to be as consistent as possible. And most of them are very consistent. There are a few exceptions. As inconsistent as you could possibly imagine. <laughs> And I do have a little bit of a problem with it. I mean, players have said that for years. I said it for years as a player, as a manager, you know, just be consistent, call the same pitch both ways so everybody has an idea of where the strike zone is. But it seems funny that the strike zone should be subjective to begin with. It's written in the rule book what's a strike and what isn't a strike. How about let's just call the rule book strike zone? Pulled way foul by Burnett. Of course, the uh, last couple of years, a higher strike has been called. For the most part, 
And that's been inconsistent as well. Some of the umpires have taken the heat of the leadership and started calling the higher strikes. Others continue to call what they view as the strike zone. Good block by Veritek. If you just imagine the strike zone at about the, the waist of Jeremy Burnett. If there's a ball that high, it should be called a strike. But rarely will it be called a strike. Usually about the mid-thigh area is about as high as any umpire will go with the strike zone. Occasionally, well, you may sneak up around belt high or catcher's face mask level. But you never see anything above that called a strike. And according to the rule book, it should be and could be. Right or right field. That ball deep. Way back. Bludgeoning here at Ridley. Four home runs for the Cubs. Recognize and correct. Oh, Bernie just staying down and threw that ball head right down the barrel of the bat. Southwest.com. We're going to wear out this logo today. 370 feet. A bludgeoning. You absolutely put it right. I'm swinging the big bats today. Right. 390 feet on the home run. That, that sounds better. 23rd multi homer game for Jeremy Burnett's. Well, Jeremy finished uh, second. In the home run derby, the 1999 All Star game at Fenway Park. That was when he was a Milwaukee Brewer. He has three hits today. Nice defensive play out there in the seats. Ricochet. Yeah, right place, right time. It's like that Hail Mary pass in football. If you hang around the bunch, somebody might tip it out to you. Up against the fence out there in a perfect spot. Obama thought that was strike three. Didn't get the call. Two and two. Maddox with a home run. Here in the sixth inning. Burnitz with two today. Bunches today, three runs in the second, four in the third, four more here in the sixth. Pitching coach Dave Wallace on the phone to the bullpen. Ramirez pulls one to left. Not quite high enough to get it out. He's going to try for a double. The relay throw is going to get him. So that'll end the inning. Greg Maddox. It's the curtain call after his first home run since 1999. And the Cubs are pouring it on here at Wrigley. Let's step aside and see what's coming up on WGN. Unwind with a double dose of Becker every night. He's one doctor with zero patience. Weeknights at 11 Eastern on Superstation WGN, where comedy isn't just very funny, it's super funny. Ball one from Cliff Bartosh to Mark Bellhormer in the ninth inning. Cubs lead 14 to 3. High drive to left. That ball back and gone for Bellhorn against his former team, his third of the year, and it's 14 to 4.
Now, runs are going to happen this time of a blowout ball game. We talked about it with Greg Maddox. The same thing holds true for the bullpen. Throw the ball over the plate. Uh, the odds are in your favor. Those players are going to put the ball in play at one of your defenders. But unfortunately, occasionally, those balls are going to find gaps or find the seats. That's better than walking a couple guys and then giving up a three run bomb. But the thing about it is that guys don't want to give up runs. I mean, yeah, you want them to throw strikes, but even if Cliff Bartosh gets the final three outs, he doesn't want to give up three or four runs. Shopik is a batter struck out in the seventh inning. Well, the story of the day today, Bob, offense and a lot of it. Three in the second, four in the third. Greg Maddox with a home run. Just the offense doing everything today. Really took advantage of uh, Bronson Arroyo, who was less than his best today. His breaking ball was kind of sloppy and flat, threw a lot of pitches over the heart of the plate, and the Cubs just didn't miss him. And then carried it right through against the bullpen. Five hits against John Halama, five hits against Alan Embry. Only Mike Timlin was able to come in and bring some semblance of sanity into this game for the Red Sox. Artash with a strikeout for the first out. Our producer of Chicago Cubs baseball and WGN Sports is Pete Toma. Skip Ellison is our director. Count. Bartosh with the 3 2 and Olerud walks. Telecast will be Tuesday night. Game two of the upcoming series against the Florida Marlins, who are struggling right now. Seven o'clock Central, Marlins and the Cubs. Tuesday night here on WGN. Two outs here in the ninth inning. And the pitch to David Ortiz misses low and away. Shift put on by the Cubs, three infielders on the right side of second base. The Hollinsworth in left field shaded almost all the way over in the gap in left center. Patterson a couple steps over into right center. Burnett's deep and straight away in right. But Big Poppy's still going to try to drive the ball through that shift. That's all he knows. Two and two. The pitch. Way back to right field. David Ortiz crushes one. Blast out of Sheffield. Or I guess more accurately over Sheffield. That ball might have short hop Lake Shore Drive. Slider that didn't slide, kind of just spun up there on the inner half of the plate, stayed right there. 
That ball hit way out there across the street. So two home runs for David Ortiz today. And it's 14 to 6. Seven home runs combined. The Cubs with four of them. It figured to be that kind of a day. I mean, the wind has been blowing out all day. Batting practice was just a circus out here this afternoon. Both teams just pounding balls out into the street. Channel pop fly. Burnett's appropriately will make the catch. Two home runs for Bernie today. And the Cubs. A pasting of the White Sox. Final score from Wrigley. Cubs 14, Red Sox 6. Back with more.